Hi, uh, it is so lovely to uh, spend a little time with you today. Um, we are going to make this Remember the Now um, book cover. Uh, I have made two different ones already and now a third, a third one to show you that each and every one can be different and also how to really uh, create them. Um, we are going to start with these uh, Tim Holtz papers, this one, uh, rip the edges and then uh, add a, a print to it and after that all the uh, other decorations. And so let's let's begin. Okay. Um, this um, paper you can rip it with a uh, with a ruler or with your free hand. And I just want to make sure it's a bit smaller than the original book cover you are going to have in the photo, uh, under the photo, like this, okay. And, uh, sorry, I think I just said it um, incorrectly. I meant it. Uh, this paper needs to be a bit smaller than the book cover to make it um, look more balanced and with a and a larger than the photo you are going to add later, or I or whatever. <laughs> but now, uh, first, I always. Put some ink on the edges to hide the white part of the ripped paper. I like this from both sides because the next thing I am going to do is to just fold it from here and there a bit like this to make it kind of pop from the edges to make it more dimensional okay and then you can just go through with the edges once more okay it's here um, I have three photos because I haven't decided yet which one would um, look the best on it. So I leave them for a, just for a moment. Now let's add glue. But I'm not adding it um, directly to the edges so that um, only to the middle part like this so that you can put um, lace underneath the edges um, later. If you add glue right to the whole paper, it won't be possible to kind of alter it later. Okay, and now I really know. Uh, Next phase is to add the lady print on this. But now I am going to use this uh, Prima icing paste. You don't need to use it. As you can see, you can hardly um, see a trace of it underneath this one. 
artist one, but still, um, because I have it, I will add it and show you how I do it. So take a stencil, some kind of um, tool to spread the icing paste and I'm not very good at it yet because I haven't made so many works using it, but you can add a bit outside the scrapbook paper to make it look like it's a kind of part of the whole work. Okay, let's see how it looks. Okay, I have a conveniently a box filled with water uh, that I put my stencil into immediately because this icing paste will really stick when it's when it's all done. So I made sure that I can use my stencil later. It's my favorite one from Finnebear. Okay, now this needs to dry, but meanwhile, as it really doesn't take that long to dry. I will need to decide which way to go. I think I'm really boring and take this vintage lady that I always associate with a queen of the night. Somehow it's uh, the moon, moon, moon queen for me. Okay, then I will add some ink to the edges because this way um, all the white parts won't be showing at all. And I find it very nice to have kind of mercy with the cutting edges. Then I take a bit of cardboard from an old parcel and put it underneath my photo so that there is room on all sides uh, because I want to add laces underneath it later. Okay, like this, and then I forgot to uh, take my uh, heating tool here, so I need to wait just a few moments to make it dry. But meanwhile, I will take some cloth and already measure it and take hmm, I think this will be very good size I rip it and tear it carefully so that it will be really old looking and uneven. Then I have this cotton lace with an elastic um, part in the middle and I am going to cut it uh, so that it broke the elastic but still make it a bit ruffled and frilled. 
Okay, I will like this. Done. I'll put it aside. And then I have these two uh, laces that are all my favorites. And I could use them like this, but I always take the even part of them out because this way I can uh, use them more freely, freely and take it can be folded and twisted um, to uh, make uh, this whole work look uh, more airy than if I have it like this. So while I'm waiting for the icing paste to dry, I already cut these. Sometimes I use these parts too because these are really lovely if you are looking for some tethered um, Shabijik vintage style um, uh, effect, but uh, on this work where the outcome is more um, light and and romantic maybe, um, it's not what I'm not, it's not what I am looking for. Okay then. I got these. My eyesight isn't that well, so it's really difficult to not to cut the whole thing in tiny pieces. Okay, ready. Now. And I don't think it's... I need my heating tool, sorry, just a moment. Okay. Ready. Now, I'm just... Trying to quicken this process a little. Then I forgot one part I uh, know it's not that visible, but there is a tiny difference if I add some distressing. Yeah, this is my favorite one. It's walnut stain. I add it on the edges and it makes. Just a tiny bit more how can I say have more character maybe. Okay, next um, I take the cheese cloth that I have already molded with my hands a bit and put it the way I like. Let's see how I like it. This is a serious business, as you can see. Okay, to make it much easier, I just put it right there. Okay, I won't be uh, gluing the cheesecloth to the paper because I 
attach it like this. I add glue only to the paper uh, because then I can twist and rip the cheese cloth a bit more. Then I won't adding it in the middle of the picture or, or the book cover because then I would have uh, problems with adding the other decorations later. So just a bit more kind of just a bit left and just a bit up. But of course you could do however you would like to do it. Okay, here we are. Um, I think I take this one out. And now I think there's as many ways to do this as there are uh, makers, but I usually start with these. I take just tiny pieces and rip the ruffled edges a bit to make it look more shabby. As you can see there's a huge difference now in them. This is more flexible to use and um, I forgot to take my food um, sticks or tweezers. I take tweezers just to show. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, I take tweezers to show you how you could you, uh, do it easier. I uh, usually do it like this, okay? And then I just add it. But you can use something to press it and mold it in place, like this, okay? Like this. I just uh, pull it behind the photo and then Add glue right next to it and take a part of the lace and kind of make them look like they are molding and twisting and going. Beneath and 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 all sides together, and I am so sorry, that my English isn't uh, very uh, woken up this morning. I am using uh, doing this video, so sorry for the um. All the grammar mistakes and missing words. You just need to forgive me. It isn't my first language at all. Okay, as you can see, I haven't any um, clear plans how I do it. I just start from somewhere and go with the flow. Uh, but of course you could arrange them beforehand, but I would find it very hard indeed to remember how I wanted them to go if I take them out. And then this is a part that takes most time it isn't hard at all and it isn't um, um, something you need to struggle with but uh, it takes time
can't see, you can't see. Uh, you can just make them interconnector or something. And of course you can then add more cheesecloth to the different uh, layers to make it uh, kind of more dimensional uh, later, but we will add some flowers in a minute. I just want to always start with the lace here in the upper part of the work so I can measure the place I want my flowers to more easily. Okay, like this. And maybe I put this. Now I take my flowers and leave some all the other decorations and start to arrange how I would want them. See, I'm not gluing them uh, at this point. I just want to see how I would find the most natural looking. Okay, I think I would start here. Then I start with something, glue it in place and start adding things. I love this clue because this is a um, one that uh, is a kind of a gentle for crafter because you it it does um, dry really quickly but not too quickly quickly so that if you change your mind you can do it just for a moment. Okay, as you can see, I just add stuff. Then I will add. A oh, this is one I have. A I have. This is a white uh, paper rose I have colored with some Petrant Angel and Prima sprays and I will add it right there like this and already at this point I will add some cheesecloth to give you the idea of how I will how, of how I always do it. I add um, parts of lace and cheesecloth here and there 
to make it look like the lace is kind of part of the flowers and it will, as you can see right there, it kind of um, makes the effect of the lace uh, being some kind of um, climber among the flowers. So this is the way I, I, I always do it. Then I simply hope my hands will find natural places for the flower parts because if I think too much I find it very very easy to kind of make it look not so natural and kind of maybe a bit not so interesting but if I just let go and play a little uh, the outcome looks in my opinion a bit uh, more happy maybe um, relaxed easy uh, natural because there is always the um, possibility of overdoing and overthinking and after all this is just crafting and having fun it's not too serious business at all and there's no such a thing as mistakes while you are crafting something beautiful please do remember it okay Because otherwise it would be horrible if you don't allow yourself to test your limits and new things and um, accept the possibility of making mistakes. Because I find it, um, I find that mistakes are the ones that usually to create create creativity flowers the most because then you need to accept the thing uh, to think that okay I made a mistake how do I it. And usually it comes much better, the outcome comes much better than if you hadn't made mistakes and then it would not kind of have surprised you and made you Use your mind and brains and creativity. Okay, I just seem to be in the mood of preaching things, sorry. You know, you know all this already. I hope you are gentle uh, towards to yourself. Okay. I have all kinds of things here because different people want different kind of 
ones is a wrong word, but um, likes to use different kind of things and arrange things differently. So so there is room for interpretation in every crafting process. You can see it's kind of filled already and you have the idea you have got the idea of how I how I do this and I think you have already uh, realized there is no shots a thing as clear way of doing it. Just have fun. I think this would be a really nice cover for an album or something filled with your beautiful memories and photos and thoughts and so on. something you can push to um, cheese coat cloth or lace underneath the papers because it's if you have clumsy hands like me Okay, then just a little bit more. I have um, dyed these with Tetradential and Prima uh, sprays, as I said already. But I made it so that I added a bit of water in a cluster, sprayed the sp spray colors, different ones inside, and then I simply dipped these flowers and roses to the color and Put it in a kitchen towel and let let it dry. It was fun because that way you could absolutely use your imaginations freely. Okay. Here. And I take this flower out. As you can see, that's possible. And we just try to maybe. Find a way not to make it look like you have made a mistake and uh, change your mind. Okay, like like this. 
this. I think it's too much. So, this is the perfect one for it. I could use uh, hours for this, but I cannot see the point of it because, well, sometimes if you enjoy the moment of a peaceful mindfulness kind kind of, um, you feel like you need a moment you don't think nothing at all and just let go then this is the perfect idea of having fun just arranging flowers and cheesecloth and laces but you can do it quickly relatively quick quickly and I'm not boring you with um, hours and hours of arranging flowers. Okay. Then I think it needs just something more to make it balanced. And uh, at this point I usually take Look how it looks from different angles and find that okay. I need to add here and there something to make it look bigger. Different angles always help to see the whole thing more clearly. Okay, I made it again and take a philosophical point of view. To my crafting, it's simply something I seem not to be able to um, live without being an ex-theologian and I take this really um, poor flower I managed to broke because broken pieces are, are beautiful too. <clears throat> Sorry, I hope you can hear my voice today. But you see the point now. I could add uh, all the laces in the world to this one uh, book cover but it's also fun you can play it in the in definitely and Not all, but almost. Stay where you are. Okay. Now I put these aside. 
because I won't be needing them anymore. And I take some barrels and uh, pebbles and add those two. I think I put the largest one right there. And don't think too much while doing it. Here and there, tiny little sprinkles of jewelry kind of um, addition because this makes the whole work look like it's um, something glistening in the morning sun. Fresh and beautiful. I use uh, Prima pebbles, but also some other pebbles I happen to have here and there. This could be finished already, but if you happen to have a um, gesso, I will show you. A way of all oh, this is quite dry. I add gesso here and there. To kind of combine the whole work together to make it um, the background part of this whole work. As you can see, it blends more clearly here and then I add so also to the edges of the you could you do it er earlier but I find it uh, more easy to see how much I want it right here okay and then Um, bring up in a pair of metallic wax. You can uh, use tools for it, but I simply find there is enough control in my hands to make it like this. I add wax here and there. You could add. Uh, add gesso to the flowers too if you want to make it look more misty but I want it now to look like morning sun like this and if you have baby wipes, no, 
now is the perfect time to use them. So that you won't be adding accidentally um, back to the wrong place. These are Finnebear uh, Mega Flakes and I just add a few here and there. There might be a official way of doing it, but this is the only way I have came up to because I haven't watched any um, YouTube videos of how to do it. I simply do it in my way. Sorry, it made me sound a bit bossy, but <clears throat> I simply mean that because I have absolutely no idea how to use them, I have made up my mind uh, to use them in, in my work like this. Here and there, just a few flakes. Uh, to make the whole book cover glisten in the sun or in the light. Okay, maybe I add just a few over there. But um, it's practically practically finished work at this point. It just um, a way of adding more bling bling to it, uh, but a kind of vintage bling bling that isn't. Uh, so very obvious from the first glance, but then you can see them when you look uh, closely enough, because they are blending these flakes really nicely uh, into the work. These are gold leaf flakes, so the um, color is quite the same as in the vintage gold wax. Okay, now let's declare it finished. And here it is. I could add some kind of a message like this Tim Holtz clipping sticker to it, but I'm not doing it now. because I forgot to take my stickers at hand. But okay, here they are, a finished piece and how I did it. And I, I hope you enjoyed and got inspired. And thank you so much for your company. Bye bye.